Hello to all our followers and welcome to this new episode of 5 Minutes. Today we will talk about transitioning nations, economic and social challenges of embracing a low-carbon future with our guest, Dr. Zoka Kotan, uh, Associate Director, Lead Economist in the Office of the Chief Economist of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Zoka, very welcome to 5 Minutes. We are very delighted to have you here. Zoka, the 2023-2024 transition report, uh, very recently released by the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, puts emphasis on the global shift towards a low-carbon economy. So let's start with an introductory question. What is the role of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and which regional area the bank covers? So first of all, thank you very much for having me. It's really my pleasure to participate in this. Uh, the EBRD, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, is an international financial institution that was founded in 1991 to help the former centrally planned economies transition towards sustainable market economies. Um, but beyond this initial geographic scope, it has expanded since to include countries, for instance, such as Turkey, Mongolia, as well as some countries in North North Africa. So today, the geographic area that it covers is roughly Estonia to Egypt and the Czech Republic to Mongolia. Thank you. So is it possible for these countries to shift their economy towards a low carbon one? So carbon emissions per capita in these economies where EBRD operates are broadly similar to the levels that we see in other emerging markets. Um, they are still significantly lower than we see, for instance, in advanced Europe. However, while in advanced Europe, carbon emissions per capita have been coming down quite significantly over the last two decades, in the countries where EBRD operates, they have remained broadly constant. Now, reducing economies' carbon footprint typically involves substantial shifts in its industrial structure. For instance, when moving away from coal or oil and gas towards renewable sources of energy. Um, now, recent work um, by colleagues of mine at the EBRD, Alexander Plekanov and Joseph Sassoon, examined the shift away from gas in European economies over the winter of 2022-23 in response to high energy prices. And they showed that um, European economies reduced their consumption of gas by about 20% over this winter relative to the previous winter. And while some of this involved a decline in industrial output, industrial production over Overall, most of this was actually due to shifts in industrial composition away from industries that are highly dependent on gas. So this includes, for instance, chemicals, metals, construction materials towards producing more in industries that are less dependent on gas, such as pharmaceuticals, but to some extent also um, the car industry, for example. Thank you very much. So what are the economic and social impacts life implications of this transition then? Um, so such transitions, um, for instance, as I said, moving away from gas, but also, for example, moving away from coal, which we examined in a transition report a few years ago, have substantial implications for employment. And in particular, these effects are highly concentrated in specific subregions of economies which are highly dependent on these industries. So, for instance, in some countries in southeastern Europe, the coal industry accounts for up to two and a half percent of employment at the country level. But in subregions within the countries, in some cases, it can account for between 10 and 20 percent of employment. So transitioning away from uh, coal into more renewable sources of energy has very substantial labor market implications in these cases. So in order to maintain public support um, for such interventions, um, it is necessary to take um, the concerns and local job market effects, this transition into account and provide policy support along the way. This is very interesting. So the last question, what could be done by policymakers to facilitate this transition? So we recently finished the fourth wave of the Life and Transition Survey. This is a household survey where we interview 1,000 randomly selected households in each country um, on a 
range of topics, including their employment, income, spending habits, but also attitudes, for instance, about climate change. And we have done this in over 30 economies um, where the EBRD operates, as well as some comparators. Findings from this suggest that people may care more about um, directly visible aspects of um, the environment, um, for instance, collection of solid waste, pollution in rivers, than more abstract concepts such as climate change or global warming in general. So in order to make maintain public support for greening policies in general, it could be helpful to focus on policies with such immediate effects that they can see in their immediate surroundings first on. Now, I also talked earlier about how shifts in industrial structure can have important labor market implications. But industry and transportation are not the only sources of carbon emissions. Um, residential emissions, so from houses and from heating, can also be quite substantial, um, accounting for about a quarter of total emissions in the economy on average. And findings from our latest transition report, um, which you mentioned, show that in these cases, um, investments, for instance, in relatively low cost improvements in insulation and in metering, double glazing, um, can reduce the environmental footprint of housing and heating substantially, even when taking the building stock and the energy mix as given. Thank you very much, Zorka, for this very inspiring discussion. We wish you all the best and we hope to see you again in five minutes. Thank you very much. It was very nice to be here. Thank you.